Hey everyone, welcome to episode 8 of Honky Outdoors. I uh, left Tamworth this morning at about 5.30, 5.45, making my way down to the Nelson Bay area again. Um, just stopped in at Scone, even though they've got a bypass around this town now, just uh, I guess I missed just driving down the main street, so I've just pulled up down here. Uh, gonna go into the cottage, uh, see you mate, grab some coffee, um, something to eat, and then I'm gonna keep going. I think got another about two, two and a half hours to go from here. Ports I've been getting the water visibility's probably not gonna be real crash hot. Um, and the swell's a bit, bit hectic at the moment as well. But um, worst case scenario, I've got, um, I've got a beach rod and another bigger sort of spin rod. I can flick some big plastics off, and yeah, not really sure what to expect. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Stay tuned. So I've just arrived here at my spot. Um, there's a crap load of tourists everywhere. So I'm just walking down this back track to try and see if I can find some visibility. Had a quick glance over the other side of the bay from the car park and I could see the weed edge. So I'm fingers crossed the visibility's there. They're probably about the visibility is actually not terrible. I think I could probably make something happen in that. I'm just gonna go back and gear up now.
car with our female rock herring tail. Apparently these are trash fish, so we're gonna see what we can do with it. Nitty get you guys. The main purpose of this trip wasn't actually just to go fishing, it was to celebrate a mate's belated buck snire, Nick who is actually the mastermind behind Guya stick baits. I'll link up that in the description below, you need to check out his lures on Instagram, they are next level. Getting ready for a quick dive with Matt. Hey. Made an hour drive up to come.
see too in sales. So I'm up to my least favourite part of the dive and that's uh, taking my contact lenses out. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not fun. Okay, so contact lenses are out. Had a shower and I'm getting ready to pack up and hit the road back to Tamworth. Got four hours of driving ahead of me, which is going to be fun. Right, I'm all packed up. Um, car's packed, got some snacks, got some power to rehydrate. Um, yeah, four hour drive back to Tamworth now. Um, should be nice and quick, easy drive. Yeah, had a pretty good dive. I'm um, looking forward to cooking up these trash fish and having to go at snails for the first time. So stay tuned, it's coming up right now. So I've just got these Banksia pods I brought back from the coast. I'm just going to crunch these up a bit and get ready for the smoker. We're going to have a crack at smoking that smaller um, female herring kale. I think that's the name of it. It's a bit of a mouthful and I haven't actually heard of um, other people eating them. But apparently they're a little bit oily so should pair well with the smoke. Okay, so we've got the fish and the smoker now ready to go. Banks your pods start to smoke out nicely, nice clean blue smoke. So stay tuned and see how this turns out. Oh yeah, fish is starting to look good now. It's been there for about 22 minutes now. Oh, that smoke sticks your eyes. Okay, our fish is up to our 72 degrees Celsius now, safe to have. So just gonna get him out. We want a good um, fishy cast. Thanks, James. Here, do you want to try some? Yeah. Okay, no. ready? You ready to try yeah. some of these fish, James? Yeah. Mmm, yummy. What do you think? Yummy. Yummy? Yeah. So this is the main reason I come out, just to grab some fresh chives. First time we've ever grown these, and they didn't grow as well as I would like. So we go, fresh chives from the garden. Let's go. Make this smoked herring kale pate. So we're gonna make a pate, and for this you need your smoked fish, lemon juice, ricotta, chives, and creme fraiche. Doing some olive oil, and some lemon juice. Add in your creme fraiche. Add in your ricotta. Add in your chives. And finally some black pepper. And there you have it, smoked herring kale pate. You guys. That is just as good, if not better, than any smoked trout pate I've ever had. And that's a trash fish. I think um, it's pretty strange to taste it yourself without with a biased view, so I might give it a go. No, he's right, it's pretty good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Up a little bit. Okay, so we've got this <laughs> female herring cow liver and dusting and flour. Add it to the butter. Okay, so this is the first time I've knowingly eaten fish liver. I'm sure I've had it in crab sticks before. That is really interesting, hey? It does not taste like fish at all. It just tastes like any other liver, almost like, almost get like a bit of a chickeny heart sort of flavour. So now we've got our, our roe, 
to dust this in flour as well. So we've got our, our fish row with some fresh parsley from the garden and also some fresh tomatoes from the garden. Right here, so fish row, fresh tomatoes, a bit of parsley from the garden. Let's see how this is. Ten times better than the liver. That's that's good stuff. Um, it's actually a Hank Shaw recipe where you brine the row first, then fry it up. He does it in bacon fat. I mean, having so she has some nice ghee. But I'll um, post a... I'll post a link to that in um, in the description down below. Okay, so time to blanch our turban snails. So just give them five minutes. Okay, so the old turban snails just said they're five minutes blanch time in boiling water. And apparently, you should be able to just oh yeah, look at that, pull it out. It's just a Heap of snaily goodness there. So as you can see, the snails are in our gear. It looks like the bottom end of its digestive tract. This white chunk of meat looks about the only thing we can use safely. Apparently this little bony bit here gets used as jewelry sometimes. So we'll to keep them and put them aside and see what happens there. And then this bit, which looks similar to abalone. So fingers crossed it has a similar taste. Yeah, see, so these are these little white bits that were in the, like the front end of the snail. How cool are they? If anyone's a custom jewellery manufacturer out there, sing out and I might get these turned into a necklace or something for my twin girls. So hit me up. Yeah, so just the same as with the abalone, you have that little section you've got to dig out like, like a bit of a poop tube. The snail's got the same thing. It's on the back there, so you just make a cut from there to there and then just push it all out. This is my tomato plant I planted on a fish frame before. It's got these nice heirloom tomatoes coming up on it now. Aren't yeah. they cool James? Yeah. Okay so what are we going to do with the snail bits we don't want? We can put it in the compost. Yep. Shake it off. That's it. Okay. It can grow and go yummy. Yeah. Run your snail through the grinder. And now it's going to do a fish. You've, yeah. either got, you've either got to grind it or pulverise the living hell out of it to get it tender. Same as abalone apparently. So I've got the grinder, so let's just do that. So this is what you're left with from two turban snails through the grinder. Probably enough to do a meal for one person threw some pasta, I think. See, heating up a fry pan now. I'm uh, just going to add a snail into some hot, hot olive oil. I'm just going to do that just enough to brown it off a bit. And I'm going to turn the heat down. Add in your butter. Also just gonna add in some minced garlic. Taste of Benjamina. Mm. Just gonna mix this in a bit. Add in some of this cheese. And there you have it, garlic butter, cheesy I want turban taste. snail pasta. I taste this. Hang on, James. Just. You want to get it this. Try that bite. This bite. Quite a bit at the front. You like it? Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. Snails. Snails. You just <laughs> ate snails. <laughs> okay, Mum's trying some. Mmm, that's good. Okay, so tonight we are cooking up a Chick fil A copycat burger recipe that I stole from Ryan Myers Expedition. Um, actually, just came across it randomly. 
back in coronavirus and I got a little bit obsessed with the idea of spear fishing and was just stuck at home watching YouTube videos, came across Ryan's videos and um, yeah, I, I really like this copycat recipe. I've tried it with a golden perch, which is a freshwater fish in Australia. Um, yeah, and it came out really good. So, gonna try it with this so-called trash fish and see what sort of results we get from it. Um, actually really looking forward to it because I, I, I don't think there's a fish that would be bad for this recipe. Stay tuned. So I'm lazy, so I've got some pre-made waffle cut fries, uh, which is apparently legit for Chick-fil-A, but I live in Australia, so I wouldn't know. So correct me if I'm wrong. Next step is add some peanut oil. And for this, you're gonna want enough that you know that your fish fillet will comfortably sit in the oil. So in this jar is the pickle juice from these pickles. I just ate most of the pickles and then took the rest out that I'll actually put on the burgers. Uh, that's our herring kale um, fillets. And so they've been marinating that in the fridge for the last hour. About all you need. And you can see it's actually slightly cooked for meat already. Okay, so I've got the fillets out of the pickle juice. Um, I've got the two big ones for Sarah and myself. And these other little bits, one will be for James and I'll divide the other one between the girls. Uh, yeah, so the process goes, you take these, dunk them in, that's one cup of milk with one large egg in it. Then you've got half a cup of plain flour, a tablespoon of caster sugar, and then kosher salt and cracked black pepper to taste. Uh, so you dunk it in the egg wash, dunk it in there, then you dunk it back in the egg wash, dunk it back in there, and then into our hot peanut oil. The peanut oil bit is important. I've tried it with, um, I think it was canola oil or something like that. It just was not as good. So I've just got the kids ones in first. Um, you watch that go like a beautiful crispy brown. It just looks like fried chicken from KFC is all I can relate it to. I guess it probably looks like Chick-fil-A and that's the purpose of the recipe. But until we get a Chick-fil-A in Australia or I head to America, I guess I'll never know. You can definitely see it starting to brown up there in the edges now. And it's starting to look very good indeed. And there you have some nice, crispy bits of trash fish. <laughs> now we're cooking with peanut oil. Just tasting some brioche buns. And this is the Chick-fil-A sauce I've got left over from last time. Okay, so I like to start with the base that Chick-fil-A copycat sauce. Uh, the fish patty, um, cheese on that one, then put tomatoes, pickles, lettuce in the middle. Emma, what do you think, Emma? Do you like it? Mm. Is it yummy? No! What about you, Claire? Yeah. Do you try a bit of fish? Is that good fish, Emma? Yum. Do you like the fish? Yeah. Is it nice and crunchy? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so unbiased opinion. Is <laughs> it, it is, good? It is really good, so. <laughs> I mean, I can sit here and say it tasted so good, but no one's going to believe me because <laughs> I'm the one that shot it and prepared it and I could just say that for the hell of it. <laughs> right, so down to my last bite of this burger and this fish definitely pleasant was a pleasant surprise considering I, what I'd heard people say about them and that, you know, you could shoot them and you could eat them, but why would you want to? There's heaps of them around, there's no shortage of them, so book into them. <laughs> Do you like it, Claire? Uh-huh. Can mm -hmm. you pull it for me? It's yummy. Banana. <laughs> 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 right, so thanks for watching, everyone. Press like and subscribe. Thanks for watching us. Can you put it on, Jess? Thanks for watching us. Bye.